Welcome to this John Wick Chapter 4 recap. Please be aware that spoilers lie ahead, so proceed with caution. The film begins with John Wick fully recovered after being shot down from a great height by Winston. He teams up with the Bowery King to start their revenge plan against the High Table. The scene then shifts to John traveling to the Elder's location in a desert in Morocco. After defeating the Elder's men, John finally reaches the Elder's place, hoping to retrieve his ring. However, the Elder informs John that the ring has disappeared, along with the previous Elder. Despite the warning of severe consequences, John disregards it and shoots the Elder, who is the only individual above the high table, to death. Shortly after, a messenger named the Harbinger arrives at the New York Continental Hotel to deliver news to Winston and his concierge, Sharon. The high table announces the closure of the hotel, and Winston is summoned to meet with the powerful member, Marquis Vincent de Grandma. The Marquis reprimands Winston for his failure to assassinate John, stripping him of his position as hotel manager, declaring him excommunicado, and revoking all his access and privileges to underworld resources. Not only that, the Marquis even destroys the New York Continental Hotel and kills Sharon in front of Winston because Winston chose to side with John Wick. After punishing Winston, the Marquis traveled to Paris with the intention of enlisting Kane, a retired high table assassin and an old friend of John, to kill John Wick. However, Kane initially refused the assassination mission, arguing that a blind man like him would not be useful enough for the Marquis. He suggested that the Marquis find someone else to carry out the task. Unfortunately, the Marquis, already aware of Kane's abilities as a blind assassin, ignored his plea and instead threatened to kill Kane's daughter if he refused the mission. In order to protect his daughter, Kane was ultimately forced to accept the assassination mission, despite John Wick being an old and valuable friend. The scene then shifts to Mr. Nobody, who was about to check in at the Osaka Continental Hotel with his pet dog. Initially, the concierge Akira prohibited hotel guests from bringing their pets inside. However, Mr. Nobody insisted that his dog was his partner in executing each of his jobs. Eventually, Akira allowed him to bring his dog into the hotel. Shortly after, Akira met her father, Koji, who also served as the hotel manager, to convey some information about the hotel guests. Akira immediately informed her father about the recent destruction of the New York Continental Hotel by the high table. Akira expressed concern for the safety of the staff and guests, knowing that Koji and John Wick were close friends and their relationship was widely known. She feared that the high table might dispatch troops to eliminate them and destroy their hotel. Acknowledging the potential danger, Akira suggested to her father that they should not offer protection to John Wick if the assassins sought refuge in their hotel. However, Koji sharply responded to Akira, emphasizing that his bond with John predated her birth. He affirmed his commitment to protect John Wick, even if it meant betraying the high table. Meanwhile, the Marquis, who had obtained information about John Wick's whereabouts, assigned his trusted associate, Chitty, and a group of high table assassins to the Osaka Continental Hotel with a mission to eliminate John upon his arrival. Kane, who accompanied them, cautioned Koji to obey the high table's commands and surrender John to them. Koji cornered Kane by saying that Kane did not value his brotherhood with John at all and preferred to side with the high table. Koji refused to hand over John, who was hiding in his hotel. Then, Koji decided to fight the high table's assassins in the midst of the fierce battle. Kane showed his great fighting skills as he was able to take down his opponents, even though he couldn't see them. In the meantime, the High Table's assassins managed to find John and Akira, who were on the roof of the hotel. They then engaged in a fierce fight against the High Table's assassins. As the daughter of one of the world's greatest assassins, Akira had pretty great fighting skills. Upon knowing that his daughter was injured and that he might not be able to protect John for much longer, Koji then told John to escape from the hotel while asking John to eliminate as many of the High Table's assassins as possible. In an attempt to escape from the Osaka Continental Hotel, John was confronted by Kane, who managed to discover his whereabouts. The two greatest hitmen in the world engaged in a high-level fierce battle as both had very great fighting skills. John's realization struck at once, he knew Kane had been assigned to eliminate him. Nonetheless, he had no intention of surrendering to Kane. Escaping Kane successfully, John reached the secret exit. 
but an unforeseen assault from one of Chidi's men caught him off guard. Luckily, Mr. Nobody intervened, commanding his dog to attack the assailant. John seized the opportunity to make his getaway. Despite Mr. Nobody's affiliation with the high table, he chose to spare John as the contract's bounty for killing John Wick fell short of his desired amount. Meanwhile, Koji, who was attempting to flee with the injured Akira, encountered Kane. Kane pressed Koji for information on John's whereabouts, promising to spare Koji and Akira if he cooperated. Refusing to betray John, Koji opted to confront Kane in battle. They engaged in a fierce duel, but Kane outmaneuvered Koji and ended his life. Witnessing her father's demise, Akira mustered the strength to confront Kane, but he urged her to flee immediately before the High Table's assassins found her and ended her life. Escaping successfully, Akira boarded a train where she coincidentally encountered John. Learning of Koji's demise from Akira's solitary presence, John became the target of her grief and blame. She demanded that John take responsibility by avenging her father's killer. Sometime later, John finally arrived in New York and met Winston when he was visiting Sharon's grave. Winston, who had considered Sharon his best friend, seemed so lost and held a grudge against the Marquis because he had killed Sharon. John then asked Winston about the Marquis, and Winston informed him that the Marquis was a powerful member of the High Table who had the full support of the High Table to kill John Wick. Winston, who wanted to take revenge on the Marquis, then suggested to John to challenge the Marquis in a duel because, according to High Table tradition, High Table members have the right to challenge other members to get what they want. However, in order to challenge the Marquis in a duel, John had to be tied to one of the crime families that were members of the High Table, whereas John had previously broken his ties with Rusker Roma, the crime syndicate that used to be John's family. Therefore, John decided to go to Rusker Roma's headquarters in Berlin to receive a new crest marking his membership to the crime syndicate. On the other hand, the Marquis tries to recruit Mr. Nobody to track down John Wick, as Mr. Nobody has a pretty great ability to track down hitmen who are good at hiding their existence from anyone. With a little bluff, the Marquis finally managed to get Mr. Nobody to agree to their deal, even though the deal only benefited the Marquis. Mr. Nobody is able to easily locate John and informs the Marquis that John Wick is currently in Berlin. Meanwhile, John, who tried to rejoin Rusker Roma, was rejected by his adoptive sister Keisha, who had been appointed leader of the crime syndicate after her father died. John tries to convince Keisha, who finally gives John the opportunity to rejoin Rusker Roma if John manages to kill Killa, a German high table senior who murdered her father. John confronted Killa at his nightclub, but instead met Kane and Mr. Nobody, who were assigned by the Marquis to kill him. Upon learning that Killa intended to kill all three of them, John reluctantly teamed up with Kane and Mr. Nobody. Together, they confronted Killa and his subordinates, engaging in a fierce fight. Eventually, John succeeded in killing Killa and took his gold tooth as evidence. Soon after, Kaisha branded John's arm with a Rusker Roma crest, enabling him to formally request a duel with the Marquis. John and Winston traveled to Paris to challenge the Marquis to a duel. In a meeting moderated by the Harbinger, John and the Marquis decided the parameters of their duel. The Marquis nominated a reluctant Kane to fight in his place. As part of the agreement, the High Table agreed to revoke John's excommunicado status and release him from his obligations if he emerged victorious. As John's companion in the duel, Winston also asked the High Table to rebuild the New York Continental Hotel, with him reinstated as the manager. Conversely, if the Marquis wins the duel, both John and Winston will be executed by the High Table. The duel is scheduled to take place at sunrise in the Basilica of the Sacred Heart of Montmartre. The Harbinger informs John that both he and Winston will be executed if he fails to appear on time. Later that evening, the Bowery King arrives in Paris to provide John with a weapon and a new ballistic suit. Meanwhile, the Marquis attempts to hinder John's arrival at the duel by placing a $40 million contract on his head. Upon learning that the contract has reached the desired amount, Mr. Nobody decides to join the rest of the hitmen on a mission to kill John Wick. On his way to the church, John fought against a horde of assassins, including Mr. Nobody, who were eager to get the $40 million prize money if he managed to kill them. However, they were no match for John Wick, a legendary assassin capable of taking down a horde of hitmen at once in a matter of minutes. 
With his killer instinct and great fighting skills, John Wick is unstoppable, especially now that he is fighting for his freedom. In a fight, John confronts Mr. Nobody, who intends to kill him, but Chitty suddenly interrupts their fight. The three of them try to defeat each other. Mr. Nobody manages to corner John, but when John sees Chitty about to shoot Mr. Nobody's dog, he immediately grabs a nearby gun and shoots Chitty to save the dog. Upon seeing this, Mr. Nobody decides to let John go because John had saved his beloved dog. John finally arrives in front of the church, but he has to climb more than 200 steps to reach the dual location. Even though John has only 30 minutes left, he is undaunted as he faces off against the seemingly endless herd of high table hitmen while climbing the steps. When John is about to reach the top, Chitty suddenly appears and pushes him, causing him to fall down. Surprisingly, Kane appears and helps John deal with the hitmen who are trying to stop him before he reaches the top. In an attempt to climb the 200 steps for the second time, John encounters Chitty again, who proves to be tougher than the high table hitmen. John initially struggles with Chitty but gets help from Mr. Nobody, who orders his dog to bite Chitty, ultimately killing him. John and Kane manage to defeat the high table hitmen and narrowly reach the summit in time to save Winston. John and Kane then begin their duel, which is a pistol duel. Whoever manages to kill their opponent first will be declared the winner. In the first two rounds, Kane seriously injures John, and the Marquis seems confident that he will win the duel. The Marquis even asks to personally execute John for the final round. However, when the Marquis is about to shoot John, surprisingly, John has not fired his weapon. He immediately seizes the opportunity to shoot the Marquis in the head and kill him. Because John manages to kill his opponent in the duel, the Harbinger declares him free of his obligation to the high table and revokes John's status as an excommunicado. The mortally wounded John then descends the stairs where he decides to rest halfway. He suddenly collapsed and died peacefully due to his wounds. Sometime later, Winston, who had been John's companion in the duel, was reinstated as manager of the New York Continental Hotel. Winston and the Bowery King visit John Wick's grave, where John had once instructed them to bury him next to his wife, Ellen. The legendary assassin, John Wick, finally achieves the freedom he has been fighting for and dies honorably. The film concludes by showing Akira approaching Kane, as she intends to take revenge for the death of her father. As the credits roll and we bid farewell to the legendary John Wick, we're left pondering, did his story truly reach its end, or is there more to this enigmatic assassin than meets the eye? Before we conclude, I want to emphasize that while this recap offers a glimpse into the thrilling world of John Wick 4, there is so much more to discover when you watch the full movie. Thanks for joining me for this movie recap. If you enjoyed it, be sure to hit the subscribe button for more movie recaps. See you in the next video.